Okay, I'm going to jump straight into this one. As the title has probably given away, this is a review of the Creative Rails East Midlands Coal Route. And my god, what a mixed bag it really is. So, we all know who Creative Rail are. These are the people who brought us some golden oldies like China Clay for export, York to Peterborough in the BR Blue period, and then they re-released it again as a late 80s, early 90s route, uh, depicting the real thing once it was electrified. Again, a mixed bag of results with those products, but they weren't too bad. I mean, let's face it, this stuff is still better than the Kuju dog crap that RFC used to recycle more times than your grandmother's bag for life from Sainsbury's. Going on that premise, we would expect some kind of steady middle of the road standard for Creative Rails content, correct? Because I'll be honest, I was surprised, no actually fucking shocked, with the results which you will see in this coal route and I dare say you will be as well. So, the route runs from Sherwood Colliery all the way to High Marnham Power Station. The route is $24.99 at full price, comes with a Class 56 and a Sentinel shunter, plus the obligatory HAA and 16 ton mineral wagon models associated with workings from the period. It comes with nine career scenarios which cover prototypical operations along this corridor of black gold in a shitty county in England. The route encompasses at least three collieries, Sherwood, Ollerton and Shirebrook, and the other key locations like High Marnell Power Station, as well as including Worksop, Wars, Wars, fuck it. Place begins with a W and it has a mass of sidings where coal wagons loaded and unloaded were assembled from would travel. Let's start with the route itself. It's quite small and self-contained. With imagination, you could get some serious play hours out of it. But with only 10 career scenarios included, it feels limited. Quality-wise, it's hard to find the right words, so let me describe it some more. The route contains custom assets, but not as many custom assets as I thought it would, if that makes sense. Remember I mentioned recycle kuju crap? Yep, you got it. Plenty of it about. There's buildings from Oxford to Paddington, Bath to Templecombe, and Newcastle to York. I mean, yeah, sure. As background scenery, the older assets are handy to populate a, a scene or areas. Uh, they are lower quality, lower poly models, which means system resources will be less of a drain than the 2008 financial crisis. But it's disappointing. Severely disappointing. It's like going out on a date and being let down when you go to the hotel room. It's an anti-climax. You ended up buying the pack of Durex for no reason. That's already one massive negative about the product. The other massive negative is it feels half arsed and half finished. There's two more collieries, one of them's Forsby and the other completely unnamed. They haven't got full location tags for sidings or destinations and that limits scenario opportunities and playability. It's small things like that which make the big difference. Oh, and one last thing. That ballast texture of the track, seriously, looks like someone took a weed killer train down the line and sprayed diluted diarrhea on the track bed. So, moving on to the scenarios, I'll make it very brief for you. They encompass lots of tasks, not a lot of dialogue boxes, including any instructions or anything like that, it's all on the F1 menu. And the scenario writer has a strange fetish for foggy weather, like nearly every scenario is foggy, overcast, rain. I mean, for fuck's sake, I know it's Nottinghamshire and it's a depressive shithole, but even they get sunshine sometimes. There's no standard scenarios, uh, there's 10 career scenarios. Uh, there's two basic quick drives supplied, uh, but there's no free roams included. Oh, and also, did I mention that in order to play those career scenarios, you need to purchase the Class 20 off Steam, then the BR Blue livery pack for it, and then the Class 31 on top of that. Because if you don't have all those things, boy, it's good, you know, you're not going to be able to play those 10 career scenarios. And even if you, say, started from fresh, you didn't have anything. Boy, that's going to be an expensive 10 scenarios, uh, unless you wait for Steam sales, which at this point is looking likely. And then we move on to my favourite thing that I wanted to mention of all time, and that's the rolling stock. I looked at the products page on the Steam store, and when I did, I was like, hmm, sensual. And then instead what we got was this. 
I know those sounds. There's bad sound editing. Very bad sounds. Washing machines. Calgon. And jiggling teaspoons. You telling me this thing was made by IHH? I thought he was done with Train Simulator. I mean, the model is pretty good. I wasn't expecting it to be super duper good, but it's good. But man, those sounds. Oh god. I mean, even the bastard horn has fucked off and declared political asylum. Because the horn doesn't sound at all. It doesn't work. You, you press spacebar and, you know, you're hitting it. Like some kind of crazed guy on drugs. You know, trying to get into a vending machine. You know, you're smacking the fuck out of this spacebar and it does fucking nothing. It's fucked off. It's declared political asylum. It's fucking left the planet. You know, it, it doesn't sound at all. And even then, it's just as well it did. Uh, I mean, it, it's the horns on IHH stuff, and knowing the sound set that it's got on it, you know, the horn would have been somewhere between sounding like a, a clown horn and basically a dodgy shart, you know, after you've had a few beers. You know, I mean, I tell you what, you, you, you guys who've done Train Simulator longer know exactly what I'm on about. You guys know exactly what I'm on about. Those, those god awful sounds. Just awful. You know, just speechless. And, you know, and then we move on to the textures. I mean, I see what they tried to do with the texture that we're looking at on on this. They only supplied it with an NTB skin anyway. But, you know, commendable effort. I mean, they tried. But, my God, the textures are too damn shiny. And, aside from that, the Loco's okay. It, it's functional. It can haul ass. It's, you know, a useful Loco. It's a small size can use it in various ap applications and you know I hope the community make the most of the, the asset because it's got potential uh, with a little bit of improvement that can be something half decent you know until we get something better that comes along and now for the class 56 no just no and no, no. and I'll tell you why it, it, it's got this looped turbo sound and it's got the sharp horn just no I mean, the textures are improved on this one, I, I'll give it that, but why why did Creative Rail not reach a deal with DTG to make a package to buy the route and the re-release Class 56? I mean, that would have been better. The re-release one has got better skins, there's the opportunity, well, I mean, it's got fixed sounds for a start, it doesn't sound half as bad, um, you know, and there's the opportunity for you to get the AP sound pack. So, anyway, after that fantastic fit and start and massive blurb of verbal diarrhea. Uh, I'll bring you the final verdict now that I've probably all sent you into heart inducing comas. Um, don't buy it. Honestly, don't buy it. I mean, if you really want to buy it, you must be a sadist. But if you can grab it for a decent price in a sale, go for it. Uh, some of the assets will be handy for route building. Uh, and if you're a clever bollocks, you can probably make something decent of the shunter. Yeah. That brought back some memories. Time for a copper and get back to normal again, I suppose. I'll see you again soon, folks.